Hey, this is Pizza Dude Man, and these are subscriber questions for October 2017. Of course, before we get started on the questions, I'd like to share artwork that was sent to me this last month by Blizz M. This is if Rosie and I played Pokemon Revolution Online. And also by Blizz M, these are portraits for if me and my friends did Heroes of the Storm. Our first couple of questions today are by Ridley Craig 187 If you had to give Mario a more concrete personality, besides just being a happy-go-lucky guy, what kind of traits would you give him? I would make Mario someone who always stands up for justice. He can't leave behind someone who's in danger or someone who needs help until their problem is solved. He has to help everybody. And on the opposite end, he has a very short fuse for injustices. Like if something is not going well, like he'll get angry and feel like he has to solve it and help. I feel like this, those are kind of traits they gave him in other things where he's had more of a speaking role like Mario Super Show and stuff like that, but I'd really, really emphasize it. Who would you choose to voice Link if they ever gave him a voice? Uh, how about James Arnold Taylor? Our next question is by my cousin Jolene. Hey cousin, which starter would you pick if you could pick any from Gen 1 through 6? Mine would be Trico. Uh, Trico is my favorite starter of all time, so since he falls into under Gen 3, that's who I'd pick. PSB123 asks, In the Sonic and Mega Man crossover comic book, Eggman and Wily made new sets of robot masters by turning various Sonic characters into robots. What are some non-Sonic and non-Street Fighter video game characters you think would make for some cool robot masters? This might be kind of random, but I think... How about Metal Gear characters, right? A lot of them already sound like Mega Man X Robot Masters, right? You could have Sniper Wolf and Decoy Octopus and Revolver Ocelot, right? Those would be great Robot Masters. Our next couple of questions are by Chicken Crispies. Of the eight generations of video game consoles, which has been your favorite and why? I really like, I don't remember which number it is, but the one that includes... GameCube, Xbox, and PS2. I mean, what a winning combination of games there. GameCube had some of the best and most unique Nintendo games that ever came out, in my opinion. And then you have the PlayStation 2, which is still highly regarded as the console with the best games to come out. I mean, it is really hard to beat the PlayStation 2 library. There was so much good stuff in there. And it was also the premiere of the Xbox. So all around, it just had really good stuff. That was a wonderful generation. It was kind of the one I grew up with, too. So there's that as well. Who is your favorite anti-hero across all forms of media? The first one that came to mind for me for some reason is Deadpool. He just stands out so much, and he's definitely an anti-hero, so I guess that's what I'll go with. Our next few questions here are some more from WrigleyCrade187. Let's keep these fusions going. Oh yeah, the fusions became a pretty popular topic from the last subscriber question video. The two that sprang into my mind were We Fit Trainer and Snake. So we would have a Snake Trainer. Snake Trainer's B move is going to be Salute the Grenade. He creates a giant energy grenade that he throws. Uh, he or she, I suppose, since you get to pick gender of, of Snake Trainer. Side B would be homing volleyball. You you throw up a volleyball and then and then shoot it down with explosive force with your hand, and then you get to remote control it. And then up B would be cipher hoop. Uh, a bunch of ciphers surround you and carry you up. And then down B would be uh, C4 breathing. You sent down a, uh, a remote control bomb, and once it goes off, you breathe in and power up. And the final smash would be... Gosh, I don't even remember the name of Wii Fit Trainer's final smash. The one where she just shoots a bunch of copies of herself. It would be like that, except for uh, they explode, and there's a reticle, so you get to choose where you're shooting all the, the copies of yourself. Like, it's still a side view, but you're shooting like they don't always have to just spread everywhere. You shoot where you choose where they, they shoot towards. So so there we go. That's that snake trainer. How would you make Izuku Midoriya work in Smash? Namely the fact that his one quirk causes him damage, and otherwise he's just a regular human with regular human powers. Well, there's lots of fighting games that have just regular people in them that otherwise wouldn't be fighting characters, and just have them balance with the other characters because it doesn't really matter. So, like 
I would have Midoriya just use his regular fighting moves and styles and stuff, his stuff that he copied from Bakugo, as his moves, and he would just be a fairly normal, straightforward fighter. Except, his special ability in Smash Brothers is that when you fully charge up one of his smash attacks, it massively, like massively increases the damage he does, but he also does a huge amount of damage to himself. And it also massively increases the range. So if you do like, let's say his forward smash is just a straightforward punch. Normally, even if you charge it for a little bit, it's just a punch. But if you fully charge it all the way, it shoots out a giant shockwave forward and it does massive damage. But Izuku also hurts himself quite a bit. Uh, that's how I would make Midoriya work in Smash. If you could have the weapon or power of any of the gems, which one would you pick? Uh, I guess Amethyst's control over her shape-shifting is pretty cool. I'd probably go with that. What moveset and codec call would you give SpongeBob SquarePants? Well, moveset's easy, because there's been a lot of great SpongeBob video games, like Battle for Bikini Bottom, and you can have him do a lot of the stuff in there. You know, give him a fighting style where he uses his jellyfish net and blows bubbles to make weapons, right? In that game, he could, like, make a Viking helmet that then he would, like, upward spike things. That could be his up B or something, you know? Uh, you could do a lot with SpongeBob's moveset just based off of that. What would the codec call be? I don't know. Could Mei Ling make a, a proverb up about sponges or like absorbing things? I don't know. That'd be funny. Uh, that's what I'm going to go with for now. Uh, our next questions are from Musomania27. Since you've caught up on My Hero Academia, what would be your hero name, quirk, and hero outfit if you were a Hero Academia character? Also, who are your favorite male and female characters in this series so far? For me and my quirk, quirks, right, are something that you're born with. You don't really get to pick your quirk. So, in real life, one of my random special talents that I was born with is that I can turn my legs backwards. So if that was transferred to the My Hero Academia world, let's just say I have, like, full flexibility with my legs. Maybe I can even stretch my legs out, just specifically my legs. I have stretchy legs. I'm like Elastigirl, but with legs only. That's what my quirk would be, and my name would be the name that people gave me back in middle school when I was showing off that ability, which was Jelly Legs. That's what people called me in middle school, was Jelly Legs, because of that ability I had. And my hero outfit would be like peanut butter and jelly themed. Like my upper body would be like stylized after peanut butter, and I'd have like peanut gauntlets. And then my lower half where my legs are would be stylized after jelly. Like I'd have like really shimmery, like pinkish bluish pants that's like glistening jelly. And it like can stretch out with my legs. So, so <laughs> there I am. What, uh, my hero name is Jelly Legs, that's right. Who are my favorite male and female characters? Uh, I'm gonna say Deku and Uraraka. They're just so well done. I, I, I love them both. I really like Midoriya, and I really like Uraraka. Here are some questions from Smash Brothers 2009. Which 3DS and Ace Attorney is overall better, Dual Destinies or Spirit of Justice? Now, I've actually never played either. I've only seen bits and pieces of both. Uh, and from my point of view, Spirit of Justice is a little more interesting, but that's just based off of secondhand knowledge. What are your thoughts on the recently announced No More Heroes, Travis Strikes Again? Uh, all I really have to say about that is I'm glad the series isn't dead. I'm glad they were able to find a way to continue it and keep it going. If you could cosplay a character from a video game, TV show, and anime, one each, who would you pick? Uh, I've always wanted to go with Detective Gumshoe from Ace Attorney. For TV show, I think I'd go with Giles from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And for anime... I think I'd go with Akio Furukawa from Clanad. Uh, those are all really simple cosplays, which I'd be fine with. They're all characters I really like. If an Ace Attorney 7 is announced, what characters would you like to see return who haven't been seen for ages? Gumshoe! Gumshoe! Where's my boy? If you had to give a counter move to a Smash character who doesn't currently have one, how would it be implemented? I actually had an idea for this back when I did uh, Smash Speculation stuff. My idea 
was that it'd be a counter that did light damage, but stunned the opponent rather than hit them back. So it'd be something like Marth and Ike's counter, but then when you hit them back, instead of them going flying, they, they just get stunned and stay in place. And then, you know, you'd use whatever move you want, like a special move or a final smash or a just a really big smash attack. Uh, any one of those that fits your situation. If you counter them while they're in the air, they go into helpless falling animation. Uh, that was my idea. This next question is from Blizz M. I know you've said Shiny Zangoose was your favorite Shiny. What would be your next two favorite Shinies? And would you ever want to be a Shiny Hunter? I'm going to go with the same thing. Zangoose was the very first Shiny I ever got besides Red Gyarados. So the next ones I got after that would probably be my favorites because they're the ones I used a lot. Which would be um, Blue Nido King and Purple Slowpoke, who I eventually made a Slow King. So Blue Nido King and Purple Slow King. So, um, would I ever want to be a shiny hunter? I would not. Uh, that is a very dedicated thing. And even though I'm a patient person and I could probably really get into shiny hunting, I wouldn't want to do solely that. I like going between game to game to game to game. I know it might not be efficient as a YouTuber, but I mean, I'm already not doing a lot of things that would be considered efficient. I like doing what I do because I feel like it, right? This is a hobby for me. So I wouldn't want to be a shiny hunter because I, I like to do what I feel like doing at the time. I, I wouldn't want to stick to a rigorous schedule of shiny hunting. We have a few more questions now from PSB123. What would be your choice of a Shovel Knight stage for Smash Brothers? I would go with King Knight's Castle. I just think that's a really great aesthetic for Shovel Knight to represent in Smash Brothers. What are your thoughts on the fact that the only part of pizza I like is the crust? No cheese, no sauce, no toppings. The crust is the only part of pizza that tastes good to me. Well, my favorite part of the pizza is the crust, so you chose well. If you were hired to make some remixes for the soundtrack of a Smash game, which song would you want to remix the most? Uh, I would definitely want to do Phoenix Wright. Phoenix Wright music is just very, very special to me. I've already done uh, orchestral versions of it, so that's what I would want to do for Smash Brothers as well. With Cloud already representing Final Fantasy in Smash Brothers, what are your thoughts on a character from these following other Square Enix franchises? Kingdom Hearts, The World Ends With You, and the Bravely games like Bravely Default. Well, of course, the thing I'm going to say about all of those is they're quite a bit down the line from Final Fantasy. You know what I mean? It's not like with Mega Man and Ryu, it's like, oh, yeah, you know, Mega Man and Street Fighter. Those are two really, really big Capcom series. Those other ones are quite a bit down the line from Final Fantasy in my mind. That being said, Kingdom Hearts is pretty big. And obviously, I think Sora would be a great character for Smash Brothers. World Ends With You, I'm not sure. It's a little more of an obscurity than a staple to me, uh, although Neku would be interesting. And Bravely Default, I would like from the standpoint that it is something very, very tied with Nintendo. And I think Tiz Arier would be a great character for Smash Brothers. So that's it for my thoughts on that. Our next question is from RidleyCrade187. Would you rather A, add more music to Suzaku Castle, B, add more music to Midgar, or C, allow custom stages to have more than one track attached to them. I'm torn between A and B, but I'm going to go with A, add more music to Suzaku Castle. And all the rest of the questions today are from Blizz M. What moveset, final smash appearance, stage, and name would you give a Yoshi King DDD fusion and a Mr. Game & Watch Greninja fusion? Wow, okay. So we would have King Yoshi DDD who would look like a fat Yoshi in King Dedede's outfit, holding a hammer and with a duck bill. And, um, and King Yoshi's moveset would be Inhale Gulp. He uh, does just King Dedede's inhale, but then after he eats the enemy, instead of holding them, they get spit out as an egg, right? Then the side B would be Gordo Roll. You throw a Gordo, but then after you throw it, it starts rolling around the ground like Yoshi's uh, egg roll ability and just kind of goes back and forth and stuff and then, until it eventually disappears. Up B would be Super Yoshi Toss. You jump up really, really high 
while throwing eggs. And then down B would be, uh, what am I going to call that? Like, jet bomb? Yeah, let's go with that. You charge up the jet hammer, and then what you do is instead of swinging it forward, uh, King Yoshidi smashes it into the ground, and it makes a big explosion that shoots stars on either side. So, so that's King Yoshi. I needed to give him a stage two. So, how about just Yoshidi's Island? It, it looks like Yoshi's Island, except for it has a bunch of, like, images and statues and mountains and stuff that look like Yoshidi. And then what was the other one? Mr. Game & Watch and Greninja? So that's gonna be, uh, Mr. Greninja? Mr. Gren and Ja? Yes, Mr. Greninja. And Mr. Greninja looks like Greninja, but it's just a flat black silhouette of Greninja with a big outline around it. And he has um, Shuriken Chef, where you charge up um, a giant sausage in your hands, and then you shoot it forward. And the more you charge it, the more sausages you shoot. And then the side B is uh, Shadow Judgment, you uh, disappear into the shadows, and when you pop up, you hit the opponent with a hammer and hold up a number, and each one has a random effect. And then up B is, um, is water fire. <laughs> it's called water fire. And what happens is you're on a trampoline, and you spring up from the trampoline with, with watery jets and spray water everywhere, and it bounces all over the place. And then, and then the down B, what's screen just down B again? Is it substitute? And then uh, Mr. Game & Watch is Oil Bucket, or Oil Panic. So we're going to call that um, uh, Substitute Panic. What happens is it's a counter that does the regular substitute ability, uh, but the thing that gets substituted is not a Rhyhorn doll, but a bucket of oil. And once Greninja has used it to counter three times, the fourth counter is this big oil spill that really damages opponents hard. And then, oh, I forgot Final Smash for King Yoshidi. King Yoshidi's Final Smash... Well, I don't even remember the name of DDD's new Final Smash. The one where he does all that the hammer attacks with bombs coming out of it. I don't even remember the name of that. But what would it be is uh, King Yoshidi would grow wings and start flying around and shoot bombs out of his mouth. Uh, and <laughs> and uh, Mr. Greninja's Final Smash... Uh, would be he, he transforms into a giant octopus and then rushes all over the stage hitting everyone multiple times like uh, Cotton On as a cis trophy. So there we go. We got two more fusions in here. The King Yoshidi and Mr. Greninja as well as Snake Trainer from earlier. Oh, and I need a stage for uh, Mr. Greninja which would be um, Flat Lumios. It's, it's Lumio City, but it's on a Game & Watch, and it's just a black city that's flat. Alright, what new color swatches would you like to see in SSB5, and for which characters? Oh, you know, a lot of the ones I'd like to see are ones that have already been, you know, fan-presented so many times. Shadow Mario, Dry Bowser, stuff like that, you know? It, it would be really cool. Do you follow A Drive, Crimson Sea Bad, or Blue Jay on Toast? I've never heard of any of them. Sorry. What is your favorite Ice type Pokemon? I want to say it's a Bama Snow. What is your favorite Pokemon type combination? Uh, Psychic and Fighting. What is your favorite unused type combo in Pokemon, and what would you base a Pokemon off of that type combo? I think Dark Fairy would be really cool, and it could either be like some kind of demonic imp or like a Spriggan. How likely do you think it is for a Dragon Quest character to be in Smash? That's really hard to say, because kind of like Animal Crossing Villager, it's one of those characters that's just you. You know what I mean? The main characters of Dragon Quest game are just generic hero that you are. To me, it's more of the novelty of using abilities from Dragon Quest, which I think would make a really cool moveset. You know, it's kind of like how Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite now has just a monster hunter character. That's really neat. Now, as far as likeliness goes, that's hard to say. I mean, if you look at Fortune Street, even Fortune Street doesn't use Dragon Quest Hero, it's all the side characters. So I would say, at very, very best, 50%. I think it's a cool idea, but it's such an uncertainty. 
What do you think the title for Smash 5 will be? I think it'll be Super Smash Bros. for Nintendo Switch. What did you think of SSB4 being Super Smash Bros. for Wii U and Super Smash Bros. for 3DS? Do you think it's lazy that they couldn't come up with a word like Brawler Melee, or do you prefer those new titles? To be honest, I prefer the, the titles that are the fighting synonyms, like Brawl and Melee. I think they were just trying to make a real uh, distinction between the Wii U and 3DS version. Like, yes, these are two separate games, but I don't know. I like the fighting synonyms. I thought that was creative. What is your favorite Z-Move animation? Ooh, I'm gonna say either Malicious Moonsault or Guardian of Alola. Those are both just really neat. What are your top three favorite non-legendary, non-starter, non-Smash character Pokemon? Uh, Snorlax, Pangoro, and Halucha. If you were to give one of them its own Z-move, what would it be called? What would it look like? What would be its type, power, and effect, as well as the required move? Hold on there, buddy. Okay, uh, let's see here. How about, just because it was something I mentioned in the last sub-quest, how about Pangoro using that bamboo katana idea I had? It will call it like Bamboo Slash. And it would be like a series of upward slashes with a bamboo katana. Uh, its type would be fighting and be based off of Sky Uppercut. That'd be the required move. The effect would be it does a lot of damage and the power would be high. Do you think you'd ever want to make a game based off of Rosie's comics using RPG Maker? Uh, short answer, yes, I think that'd be interesting. Long answer, I'd rather do something completely original. Have you ever watched any movies for the Despicable Me series? If so, which one is your favorite? I've seen one, two, and Minions, and my favorite one was one. If a Nintendo series had their own MMO in the style of World of Warcraft, which Nintendo series would you pick and why? Oh, definitely Zelda. You could have a world that's kind of based on Breath of the Wild, but bigger. And then you could have, you know, the different races playable. You could play as like a Rudo or a Zora or a Goron or a Hylian, right? I think that would be a really cool thing. And then, our final question, have you ever played or heard of Pokemon Revolution Online? I had not heard of it until this question and the artwork, and uh, it sounds pretty interesting. I mean, I've thought of similar ideas, and I'm sure plenty of people have, so it's kind of cool that someone went ahead and did that. And that's it for my subscriber questions for this month. If you have any questions for next month, leave them below. Of course, if you make any artwork, send it to me through Twitter or Facebook or a message or whatever, and I'll show it off on the next subscriber questions video. And I will see you next time. Thank you for watching.